Press freedom is, of course, an essential uh, part of all of our lives. Press freedom is all of our freedom. And an event like this helps us to remember and reflect on that. Uh, so let me uh, turn to our first guest uh, here for the second half of our festivities. Our next guest is an activist, a blogger, and a motivational speaker whose work is in demand. Uh, she works with organizations like the World Wildlife Fund, We Day, and Free the Children. And she's not old enough to vote yet. We might all work for her one day. Uh, in fact, <laughs> this next guest has just been accepted uh, into the School of the New York Times Summer Academy. She's going to spend two weeks living and learning in New York with faculty uh, from my alma mater, the New York Times. So let's say congratulations and welcome to Hannah Alper. Come on out. All right. Hi, everyone. All set? Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> I'm so, can I just say first, so I told you backstage, uh -oh. but I watch Reliable Sources every week, so it's really an thank honor you. to be here. Well, thank you. Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, there's a plug. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, I have a feeling you're gonna, uh, gonna be on with me at some point. Maybe. Teenager, activist, blogger, author, and you're in school, and you're here with us today. <laughs> How do you do it? How do you find the time? I think that when you love something as much as I love activism, and as much as I love talking to people about what I'm passionate about, which is making a difference and changing the world for the better, I think that just drives you. Um, I've learned to be able to pri prioritize and time manage and as well. I take online, I take a few online courses. I take grade 11 gender studies and Aboriginal issues in Canada online, which has been really helpful because I get to go at my own pace and I get to learn education that I wouldn't learn in public school. And so it's been really interesting and my parents are so, so supportive. But again, I'm so passionate about what I do and I wouldn't trade it for the world. So while it does get <laughs> stressful, I love talking to people about how they can make a difference in their own lives and how they can create positive change. So that just wins over everything. And, and your interest in journalism, how do you see that connecting to the activism you do or, or maybe sometimes the tension between the two? I really believe that journalism plays a role in how people evaluate and act in the world. Mm. I think that there's so many bad things on the news lately. But I feel like that when people see bad news and when people see things happening in the world, maybe people will feel compelled and empowered to take action on them. And that's basically what I've been doing since I was nine years old as an activist, and I'm 16 now. I'm an aspiring journalist, and I want to be a journalist because I want to be a voice for the voiceless. And I think that that's why anybody wants to be a journalist, or at least I hope that they would want to be a journalist for that reason. And I want to tell the stories that need to be told. And, you know, the whole point of tonight is showing that news matters. And I want to share the news that matters. And again, I want to be a voice for the voiceless, and I want to tell real stories about real people and connect with people. I love having conversations. I've been able to do that in places like Kenya and Costa Rica and all across North America talking to people about their stories and so doing that for a living and telling the truth and sharing facts and hopefully empowering people to do something would just be incredible did you say you started when you were nine because I didn't build my first web page till I was 10 and now I, I feel quite old you know and that look that was in the 90s the, the world was brand new there wasn't this news ecosystem I wonder where in 2019 where, where do you get your news so I watch a wide range of news. I watch CTV. Yeah, other CTV, than reliable yes. sources. Of right, course, right, obviously. Right. Shameless plug. Um, I do watch CTV, CBC, but I think most rec a lot recently I've started to get more into online news mm -hmm. uh, because I think it's the writing from journalists is absolutely incredible and they work so hard to put the writing together. And so I think I've been learning a lot from that recently. Mm -hmm. In February, I did a campaign called Hashtag FeedTO where I packed 100 care packages with things to give out to people experiencing homelessness in Toronto. And to do that, I had to do my research on the state of homelessness in Toronto. And so I read incredible uh, articles from BlogTO, which, did it, which launched a full-on investigation into homelessness in Toronto and how the Toronto government and the Ontario government handles homelessness. And so I think it's just so interesting. And we have... Because of social media and the internet, I've grown up with it, we have such a wide range of opinions and voices. And while that can be a bad thing sometimes, because there's such an intense amount of freedom of expression, I think that it can be such a wonderful thing too, because so many people can form their own opinion. And I think that's where I get my news, and just everywhere. And I'm hoping just to get more and find more reliable sources as I get older and become more passionate about different things. I found out when I got here today that 
you had some questions you wanted to ask me also. So let's, uh, let's, let's flip it around. Let's, uh, let's have you try out as the TV host. Okay, this is going to be my practice for CNN, okay, right? Good. Okay, great. Let's just play it at that. So how do we stay positive and keep being powerful in our truth when everything on the news leaves us feeling angry or helpless? Or at least for me it does. So how do we stay positive and powerful in our truth? And you're not the only one. Uh, I, I think you got to recognize that um, stories are making a difference every day. You look at what happened today, uh, you know, a few hundred miles to the south. The pre President Trump's pick for, uh, for a Fed post uh, withdrew, in large part because of news stories about awful things he had said in the past. Uh, and that's uh, an example of news mattering. It's an example of the news making a difference. You, know, you can think that was a good or bad thing, but it shows that the news is not being ignored. Uh, and and that, that's what makes me uh, motivated. I, you know, when I go in for my show on Sunday, I think about what can I say that hasn't already been said a hundred times on cable news? That's not always easy because we're talking 24 hours a day. Well, or on Twitter, too. But it's a good challenge. And, and Twitter, oh, Twitter. Twitter. I met my wife on Twitter. So, really? so I, there's a real part of me that loves Twitter. I, you I know, love Twitter. Yeah. I think it's great. But it's also this ugly sewer yes. of hate and misinformation. And I think it's all about. It's all about adjusting the, the, the antenna or adjusting the tuner so that you hear information and insights. And in my case, I get ideas for guests on Twitter and ideas for segments. But I have to tune out the hate and nonsense and noise. And it's just about constantly adjusting in that way. I completely agree. I think that social media, especially for my generation, it's become a tool for my generation to talk about what we're passionate about. I mean, take the March for Our Lives movement, for example. They were able to mobilize a million people in Washington because of that. And I mean, my generation is powerful. We have these amazing ideas and we're change makers. We're the change makers of the world right now. And Twitter and social media has been our outlet. But then at the same time, it's also provided an ugly platform for people to be rude and be anti-Semitic and racist and all of these different things. And so I think it's really interesting how we can control that while still being passionate and while still having a voice. And remind people where they can follow you. Yes, you can follow me at that Hannah Alper and call me hannah.ca is my blog. There we go. Hannah, thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome.